that um, because one of the things that a political party is, especially when it's healthy and it's uh, vibrant, is it's a container for a number of entities and different forces, right? And potentially a, a political party could be a, a meaningful space in order for a number of tendencies across the left to engage in a, an electoral united front sort of strategy, right? And much of my work, so I just started as the national director of the Working Families Party in August, so this is my, my eighth month. Um, and part of my work around transforming the Working Families Party is to create the conditions under the party where we could begin to experiment with that very question that you posed, right? Where a number of tendencies and a number of organizations could utilize the tools of the party as a place to engage in struggle together, but also throw down together um, around electoral targets. Um, and to look at the party as being an electoral expression, of, a non-sectoral electoral expression of the left. Um, and, you know, part of the reasons why I think the conditions haven't, you know, my, my analysis is that because one of the conditions that don't allow for us to do that is the fact that we don't have party structures. I don't think the Working Families Party needs to be the only party, but I think certainly we could be one of many people who are, are attempting to experiment with this type of electoral organizing, where we're explicitly trying to develop non-sectoral uh, platforms for a number of, of left entities and left organizations and mass organizations to throw down together, even as they struggle around really important ideas. Um, the other thing I would say is that, to me, the, the, the goal of any left is not necessarily to consolidate the left, right? The goal is to organize the working class, right? Um, one of the sort of intermediary steps may be the consolidation of some forces on the left in order to amass enough power and amass enough, enough capacity to be able to organize the working class, right? And so to that end, I don't think we should seek unity for unity's sake. I don't fetishize unity. I think, um, you know, I think creating alignment of forces that are deeply aligned around strategy, around ideology, and have political trust to be able to throw down together. And when contradictions arise, that trust keeps, that trust, ideological alignment, and strategic alignment keeps, keeps the alignment together. I think that that requires a, uh, a stronger, tighter, but perhaps smaller alignment of forces in order to amass enough power so that um, you have enough capacity to actually engage in this big project, but you aren't such a broad coalition that you are unwieldy or um, so ideologically stretched um, and that you can't actually, you kind of end up taking the lowest common denominator position instead of the ideologically sharp position. And so what I'm trying to practice uh, with the Working Families Party is to um, engage in an alignment that with forces that are ready to go, have some practice with each other so there's some trust, have some, some uh, remaining uh, non-sectoral, have some ideological alignment and strategic alignment. And even then, there's going to be a lot of debate, a lot of struggle. Um, but I, I think that uh, there's a there's a, the, the broad table doesn't, doesn't cut it. You need a sharper cut. Um, still broad enough that you have enough capacity so you're not just talking to your friends, but not so broad that, that, you know, for example, the Democratic Party is a perfect example of, you have people who identify as socialists and people in, in the financial, dis, the financial uh, industry in the same party. And it isn't a, flat structure, the folks in the financial industry and the folks in organized capital, the organized capital wing of the Democrats are clearly uh, the, the ruling wing, whereas everybody on the left flank are kind of at, at best um, sort of um, third tier, second tier partners at best. And so that to me, that alignment um, sort of demonstrates the fallacy of everybody just like linking arms and throwing down together. 
you need a sharper ideological cut, I think, to build enough capacity in order to engage in, in some structural change. Because, you know, where you have two wings where they have deeply opposed structural agendas, it's going to lead to, I think, some point, some, some form of uh, rupture. And the, again, because it isn't a flat structure, the folks who are the sort of leading forces in that coalition will be able to to crush or to silence um, the, the forces that are kind of along for the ride in that, that point of rupture, which is why I feel like it's so, even as, even as we have folks who are leftists who are organizing within the Democratic Party, it's essential that we build our own institutions outside of the Democratic Party, especially for that point of rupture. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Kayla Reed. I'm with uh, the Movement for Black Lives Electoral Justice Project and uh, Ash from St. Louis. Um, so for us at EJP, what we understand is that, you know, we are aligned with what basically Mo just said, is this idea that maybe uh, coordination is not the goal, but connection and uh, political alignment is certainly the goal. And what we've identified as Movement for Black Lives is the North Star, which is our vision for Black Lives policy that was released well before the November 2016 election. And what we understand in our theory of change is that grassroots organizations are key to the uh, process of building the power necessary to really leverage uh, wins. And even in the face of loss, we understand that if we're really leaning into movement building, that we've grown and, and, and shown more power because of our commitment to political education uh, and base building. And so what we are focused on is not organizing just national organizations or regional, organi regional organizations, but really focusing on local grassroots organizations. The Movement for Black Lives is made up of these organizations. And EJP's commitment is to not have a top-down approach to organizing or power building, but to be a resource and partner for local organizations to be able to self-determine a strategy to build power in their communities and to convene spaces where strategies can be shared across localities and lessons can be learned toward uh, applying um, to the field to, to build that power. Uh, some of the best wins that we've had before 2016 and after 2016 have been movement wins, uh, whether that is in, within democratic cities like St. Louis or Chicago or within states. Uh, so Missouri, for example, um, we had two major wins in 2018, one within uh, St. Louis, which is a majority Democratic space by ousting a very conservative uh, prosecutor, and statewide in a, city, uh, in a state where we also have a Republican trifecta um, and passing the minimum wage. And so what we understood is that coordination uh, is certainly a tactic, but connection mattered a lot. So within our state, we had coalitions that were at work around political alignment. And within St. Louis, we were also building those coalitions that share political alignment towards those goals. And so when we think nationally, we are certainly thinking about the need for coordination for a shared strategy and political trust, but making sure that we don't replicate uh, problematic tendencies like having a top-down approach. And we see that a lot with national organizations, that they come into communities with kind of this uh, rubber stamp idea of how to build power and it doesn't stick. And we wanna make sure that our investments um, are focused on organizations, building organizations. And I think that that's, that's really a key to winning that the left has to accept uh, is, is really investing in leadership and organizations that will be in those communities beyond uh, an election cycle. Um, and so that we're moving relationships away from this kind of exploitative, exploitative relationship where we're extracting votes we're actually investing in a strategy that's building power. Uh, and I think if we decide that and we're moving toward that North Star um, align, then the connection uh, and coordination will, will happen. I had a small point, uh, Linda, this is Andrea. I think just like a baseline of, um, like what's the baseline coordination we need to be effective and impactful? So for example, I think oftentimes organizations are so siloed to their issue area or to their neighborhood that when they're looking at politics they might only be looking at um looking at it like from this narrow slice and one of the things that we've been trying to do is really think about um not just statewide theories of change but can we actually drill down like county by county this is what it would take to get to um a progressive majority in the miami-dade you know county commissioners or you know these are 
um, you know, in Broward County, where you have Democrats that control the county commission, like this is what it takes to hold their feet to the fire or to get out that neoliberal Dem or that corporate Dem and replace them with somebody who could be a real champion. Um, I think there, that level of coordination um, is oftentimes missing and is just really necessary, which doesn't necessarily mean like you're um, acting in a uh, in ideological alignment, but at least like are we coming to the table to really talk about um, the political shifts that need to occur and um, and how we might get there, um, even just to surface like different points of view and then to understand um, what the different strategies are and how we're moving in that direction.